Hello everyone, welcome back. Part two of uh, painting and getting all of our parts and pieces prepped for our Pro Touring Trans Am chassis from the Roadster Shop. So behind me here in the booth, you can see the parts that we got painted last week. I'm gonna get the camera flipped around and I'm gonna show you what the ended up, the final finish looks like. So as you can see here, it, uh, the paint dried to more of a satin or a semi-gloss finish. Now it does have a little bit of texture there to it. I think uh, this is gonna be fine for the parts that we have here, mostly uh, suspension parts or so the four link bars, the upper and lower control arms, those parts will be fine. But I think what I did learn is once I go back in to spray the actual chassis, I'm gonna reduce that paint down just a little bit. Um, maybe get it to lay down a little bit slicker. Uh, but overall, the parts uh, turned out really, really great. Uh, we still got them taped up, still got them hanging up here but um, we'll get those uh, moved around here a little bit later to today. Over on the chassis, you can see here we've got it turned over. Uh, it's upside down at the moment. We've uh, went ahead and finished up some of our welding that we needed to do on our bracket here. This is the driver's side, so it's upside down. This is the bracket that we made here for our heim joint. We went ahead and got that completely welded up. And then uh, we've also went ahead and went and uh, wiped everything down with grease and wax remover, just like what we did on our suspension parts. And now we're getting ready to sand this uh, with a DA and some 80 grit uh, to knock all the, um, the metal, put a good scratch and everything, clean it up. We'll probably take a wire wheel around in a couple of areas just to get everything prepped for epoxy primer. So I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit between the chassis uh, and the bottom of the body finishing it up. I would like to get everything moved around, get my chassis hung up in the booth. And when I shoot my epoxy for it, I would love to be, a, be able to go ahead and shoot the epoxy here on the bottom of the body. Um, we're making pretty good progress on that. Um, everything is sanded down, looking really well. Uh, you can see there a couple bare metal spots. Uh, we've still got a little bit more sanding to do up here in a couple of little areas and uh, pretty much got everything finished up here. We've got our wheel well sanded really well. Got to come back in and sand our, uh, our groove there. That's still got to be seam sealed and a little bit back here uh, in this area here. So a little bit more to do there. So I'm going to kind of bounce around, like I said, between the two. Hopefully get everything ready to put epoxy on at the same time. Um, once we get the epoxy on the bottom of the floor pans, we'll be able to go back in and then we'll do all of our seam sealing uh, and then it'll be ready for our Raptor liner. So that should go pretty quick. Um, hopefully we can get those two done about the same time. We can get the Raptor liner on this one and then get the uh, paint put on to our chassis. But uh, it's going to probably take me a couple of days. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies here to get on the chassis. Uh, just getting in all the little brackets and stuff here for the suspension components. Uh, just a lot of little, little crevices to get into and sand. A lot of that has to be done by hand. You can't even really get a, a wire brush in there on some of those areas. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on that. And uh, we'll see how far we get.
So as you can see here, we have the bottom of the floor pans here completely ready to go. This is ready for epoxy. We've got all of our sanding done. We've got our body taped off here. Uh, we went ahead and taped it up like that because once we spray our epoxy, uh, we're going to come right back over the top of that uh, the next day. So we're going to spray this this afternoon. Uh, in the morning, we'll come back in. We'll do all of our seam sealing. So we're going to come back in and seam seal all of our joints here around all of our cross members, all of our cross members here. Any joint underneath the bottom of this car will have seam sealer in it. Uh, so to kind of help to protect it there and then that'll be ready for undercoat. We won't have to do any kind of sanding in between. So we went ahead and got all of the body taped up uh, just for that. So uh, as you can see here, one of the things that we did, we did leave our rear uh, bushings in there. Those are a little bit of a pain to get in and out. So we left those, just taped them up, they'll be fine. Uh, any of our holes here for so like our seat belts um, and our body mounts, any kind of threaded hole that we're going to need, we went ahead and just stuffed some paper towel down in there to kind of protect, uh, keep all the paint and uh, undercoating and stuff out of those threads. We'll probably still go back in and run a thread chaser through them before we put it together. Uh, it just kind of helps keep a lot of the bulk of that material out of there. While we were prepping the bottom of the body, uh, getting it ready for undercoat, the only other parts that's going to be undercoated will be our inner fenders, so or on the front. So we went ahead and spent some time uh, sanding those. Now you might remember uh, back several videos ago, we went ahead and sprayed those with the, the Tamco high belt epoxy, just like what we did here at the floor. So we did do some modifications here. We've done some welding on them. Uh, we kind of reshaped a little bit of um, some parts on those inner fenders. So we had to go back in and sand those. We're gonna go ahead and put another coat uh, of epoxy on those and then we'll do our body work on the engine bay side and the bottom side here, the wheel side, we'll go back in and do uh, undercoating in here. So I wanted to go ahead and get these done so we can undercoat this side uh, when we do the body here. Go ahead and have those done and get them knocked out. So let me go in here and I'll show you where we are on the chassis. It's hanging up in the paint booth, so let me get in here. So as you can see here, we do have our chassis hanging from our uh, paint booth. Um, when I built this booth here, we installed some uh, eye hooks up here in the ceiling so we're able to hang heavier uh, parts in here. So just like this chassis, we've got it hanging by six uh, straps, which is plenty enough to hold it. We've got it at a good working height. Uh, one of the things that we did do uh, kind of off camera is we went ahead and wiped everything down uh, really, really good with the Tamco uh, final wipe to get any kind of greases and waxes and stuff off of it, any residues that were still left from when we sanded it. We also went back in with a scotch bright and got in any kind of little hard to reach areas. Uh, so like right in here, we scotch brighted all that around all of our little bracketry and stuff. Anything that we couldn't get uh, with our DA sander, uh, we went back in and scotch brighted that up. So this is the last time you'll see this uh, in bare metal. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and try to get our epoxy sprayed on it today. We'll come back in uh, tomorrow and then the chassis will be ready for top coat uh, with our chassis black. And then, like I said, the bottom of the floor pans there will be ready for seam sealer uh, and Raptor liner. So just kind of giving a slow walk around here one last time, looking at that in bare metal. Um, again, we're just blown away at the, the quality here of that Roadster Shop chassis. I just can't say enough about it. It's really good quality. I uh, hadn't seen anything that, you know, to raise an eyebrow uh, at all of their welds look really, really good. Um, I'm just really, really impressed with the spec series chassis. You know, the only thing that we had to do was just kind of add a couple of brackets uh, for the emergency brake stuff that we did, and then the one bracket for the steering um, steering rod, a little heim joint there for that. So anyway, we're going to, uh, we've already got our epoxy mixed up, uh, kind of letting it uh, kind of marry together a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do one final wipe down here. Make sure any of the dust is off of it, blow it off really good, and uh, get this chassis sprayed with a, a epoxy, and then we'll move over and we'll do uh, our floor pans there on the bottom of the body. So let's uh, go in here and get after it.
So there you go, it's the next morning uh, after we sprayed our epoxy. This is what everything looks like. We're getting ready to come in and go ahead and do our seam sealer here uh, underneath. Uh, I've already got some seam sealer loaded up into my, uh, my pneumatic gun, but this is what we're using. We're using the uh, SEM uh, part number 29492, the two-in-one uh, seam sealer. We use this a lot. It's a really good, uh, smooth consistency, um, and it works really good. You can use it in a regular caulking gun, or you can use it in our pneumatic gun, uh, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. Uh, let me go in here and show you what the frame looks like. So as you can see here, we got our epoxy sprayed on our frame too, and it looks absolutely amazing. Um, the Tamco epoxy has a little bit of a shine to it. Uh, like I said, we sprayed this late yesterday afternoon. This is the next morning. Uh, and as you can see, it is dry to the touch, uh, but it does have a nice little shine to it. And then uh, we'll go back in and top coat it, uh, hopefully today with the, uh, the chassis black, but you can already tell what this chassis is gonna look like once it's painted. Absolutely gorgeous. So we've got a lot of seam sealing to do. We're gonna go ahead and, and get started on that and um, hopefully get uh, the undercoating sprayed on that today and get this chassis top coated. So there's 101 different ways that I've seen guys uh, seam seal uh, different things on a car. This being on the bottom of the body, you're not ever gonna really see this a whole lot, but I have seen people before where they come in and try to tape up and do a nice little taped edge right there. And then once they pull your tape up, you're always left with a little bit of a jagged edge. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna simply run, and I'll, I'll do this here, then I'll zoom in on it. I'm just gonna simply come in and run a bead of seam sealer here. Then I've got some gloves here. I'm just gonna come in and wipe that excess off and give us a nice little transition there. And then once it's uh, undercoated, you'll literally never see that. Uh, and we're using black seam sealer today. So again, you kind of get the theme, everything on here is black. So if it's ever chipped, um, you're not looking at gray primer, you've got a, a good coat of black. So we're gonna start right here just on this one uh, and I'll show you uh, what we're doing. And then I will come back in and zoom in and I'll show you what this is gonna look like. Really just want to go around all this cross member here. And then once we get that, we're going to come in with our finger and try to do this nice and easy. Let me get a uh, paper towel. Help keep any excess off. And so there we go. That's kind of what we're looking for here. So I'm gonna to try to get you zoomed in so you can see what that looks like. It's kind of hard to tell being everything black, uh, but you can tell there, like I said, once it's all undercoated, you'll never really see that. And then that protects any kind of water from getting in the backside of that brace. You can see it there a little bit better in the lighting. So we're gonna come on in and get every um, seam. We're gonna get in here around this cross member here, all around our box here for our computer mount and everything. So I'm gonna get this set up here. We're gonna speed through this and uh, get this knocked out.
right, guys, so now we've got all of our seam sealer uh, put on. You can see there, it's gonna look pretty good. We got all of our seams around everywhere that we could, um, everywhere that it's needed. So we're gonna go ahead and let this set for just a little bit and while this is setting and the seam sealer is kind of curing, we're gonna go ahead and paint uh, our chassis. And you can see here, I did go ahead and start laying out a piece of foam edge tape here where we're gonna tape this off. Uh, we're gonna just undercoat from here back and from this line forward will be painted on the firewall and the tow boards. So we're gonna go ahead and let that set and then we'll come back in, finish masking off the firewall and uh, that'll be ready to undercoat by the time we get our chassis painted. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get our chassis black mixed up and uh, get our chassis sprayed. Okay guys, I've got uh, all of uh, my gear on here and uh, we're ready to spray this chassis. So. Let's get in here and get at it. It's going to get hot, and uh, but hey, it's what's got to happen. All right, guys, we got her done. Hot, but we got it done. I'll uh, cool off here. <laughs> we'll go back in and take a look at it. But uh, it's going to look really, really good. Uh, I think it's uh, everything has turned out well, and uh, so. Let's go take a look at it and see what it looks like here in just a little bit. All right, so we've had a little bit of time here to let this uh, paint dry and uh, air out the, the paint room here. You can see here we've got three coats of the Tamco chassis black. And it'll dry a little bit um, with a less gloss than this, but you can see there right now it's still a little wet. Uh, it'll take it a couple of hours to kind of die back down. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there's just not a huge, huge difference between our, uh, the way that it looks on camera here between our epoxy and the paint, uh, being as we did everything black epoxy. But uh, like I said, to me, that just, um, it gives it to where if it does ever have a rock chip or anything on it, uh, you have black primer underneath. Uh, makes it a lot harder to spray because you have to kind of really keep up with where you are and where you've been uh, when you're painting. But um, I think the end result is uh, is well worth it. So now, unfortunately, we have to uh, suit back up and uh, get hot again. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, bottom of the, the floor pans and stuff sprayed with our undercoating. And uh, so I'll go out here and uh, show you what we've got with that. The chassis, though, is looking absolutely wonderful. So we've got our Raptor liner uh, laid out here on a little bench here. So we did two full kits uh, of Raptor liner. They come, uh, you can buy these in two bottles, you can buy them in four bottles, or in our kit situation, we bought eight. They're 24 ounces uh, in each of those bottles, and then you put eight uh, ounces of the activator, so you've got 32 ounces uh, per bottle. So that's two gallon, basically, uh, product that we'll be spraying. And what we do is we just buy the kits uh, with the gun. They come with this nice little uh, gun here to, to use and spray. Uh, you do have to have a regulator to put on the bottom of it, but once we get done, we just simply you know throw the gun and everything away. So we get another one the next time. But um, so that's what we're going to be using there. We've got that set up there where we got easy access to it, so we can swap the bottles out pretty quick. Of course, we've got our car here. We did go ahead and tape up our firewall and. Um, Got everything ready to go here. We're going to do the bottom side of the body and we're going to do the back side of our uh, wheel wells here. So one thing, if you're not familiar uh, or too familiar, if you've never sprayed a Raptor liner kit, uh, you do have to put it on in thin coats. Um, if you put it on too heavy, uh, it will actually flake off and you'll have issues with that. So just like any other painting, uh, any other product, you want to put it on in light coats. So we're going to spray the entire um, car, the bottom of it, and we're going to spend probably a little bit of extra material up here in our wheel wells, front and rear, and then um, where we know, like behind our wheels and stuff back here, where there's going to, you know, if you have debris and stuff from the tires and stuff like that, we'll spray it a little bit heavy back there, put a little, a couple of extra coats. But uh, all in all, we've got it ready to go, got it taped up, so we're going to go ahead and get suited back up and um, get this thing sprayed.
So that's just after the one 32-ounce uh, bottle that we sprayed uh, on here. So we've got it super thin. But one thing that I didn't mention earlier, too, about the Raptor liner that's kind of cool is you can uh, you can pretty much adjust the texture to what you want. I'm going for more of a really fine texture, kind of like what we've got here. But if you wanted it real heavy and coarse, all you have to do is turn your pressure down just a little bit. Uh, so what I did there, you kind of see me, I had my pressure turned up a little bit higher and I kind of come back away from uh, the surface a little bit so it gives it a little finer texture. And then I'll just continue that process until we get uh, the entire eight uh, bottle sprayed. We'll flip this thing over make sure that we've got every uh, surface really good So we'll turn the rotisserie to get it from the other side. So we make sure that we're coming uh, Not just here, but we're spraying back up this way too, making sure everything's good and covered We'll do that a couple of times like I said till we get everything covered. We still got to spray our inner fenders here um, But you kind of get the idea there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this knocked out, but you can see there um, what it's going to kind of look like and you still kind of see that it's still kind of shiny right in here so we did spray it super thin uh, so we're going to go ahead and just keep building the layers up and uh, we'll come back here when we get finished up but you can see there boy she's going to look awesome so there we go finished product after we sprayed all of the raptor liner we went ahead and sprayed all eight bottles of uh of product there and uh man it just absolutely turned out great i absolutely love uh, the look of this Raptor liner here on the bottom of the body. Everything is coated very nice uh, with all of our seam sealer and stuff in there that we've done. It's all protected really, really well, so especially for a good driver quality car, what this is going to be. It's going to be a high-end driver, don't get me wrong, but um, you're planning on getting out and driving this car and you can get years and years of abuse on this. Uh, it protects the floor pans. Uh, sealing everything up with a seam sealer it helps you get uh, keep any water in that out of there, so it'll help uh, with future rust uh, damage and uh, with the Raptor on there and the epoxy that we've got that floor is absolutely sealed up and you will not have to worry about it for years and years to come so that and it does give a little bit of uh, protection as far as like your uh, sound deadening not a whole lot we're going to go back in on the inside of the floor and add two layers of sound deadening there so That'll really take care of the inside, but uh, as you can see there, we got our inside of our wheel wells done on the front here. They turned out pretty well. As, uh, again, just um, sprayed them a little heavier than what we did on the body. Uh, I kind of that lasts probably bottle and a half. I kind of went back in and, and sprayed everything that I knew was going to be, um, you know, seeing the most abuse. So our wheel wells back here. Uh, even got in here and tried to spray some inside of our rails the best we could. Um, but it's just a pretty awesome uh, look. This is, like I said, one of my favorite stages of the, of the car. You can All the hard work starting to pay off. You can see your final finishes on everything. And uh, you can tell here between this and when we get uh, our chassis all finished up and put back together, this thing's going to look absolutely beautiful, guys. So there you go, guys. We're going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. I uh, hope you've liked the, the video series here on the build of this car. Um, so somebody said in one of the other comments there, the video, you know, our attention to detail, and I really appreciate you picking up on that. We spend a lot of time and a lot of hours on these cars and stuff that, you know, most anybody uh, will probably never see unless you go back and watch my video series. But uh, this car is going to be absolutely immaculate. And uh, for the money that we're putting into it and for our, our owner is putting into it that, uh, you know, we really want it to be nice and hold up for years and years to come. So. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. We've still got a lot of prep work to do. We've got to get caught up on uh, our rear axle. We've got to get it epoxy uh, in epoxy, and we've got to get it painted as well. And sway bars, a um, couple of other pieces, odd and end brackets for the uh, chassis that we can go ahead and finish up. Then we'll move on to our motor and transmission, getting those prepped, ready for paint. And then we can start all of our uh, reassembly on everything and cleaning everything up for that. So lots more work to do, lots more to come. Appreciate you guys watching. Hey, continue uh, liking and subscribing to us if you haven't subscribed to us. And if you got any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'll try to get to you as quick as I can. Hey man, thanks and I'll see you next time.